Hello, hello, more Dimmers here and welcome to the third round of Tata Steel uh, Chess Tournament, uh, Vegan Z 2020. And today I didn't want to uh, show another game of uh, Jordan Van Forest uh, from Netherlands, uh, because I show one of his games already. Uh, but he plays so great game against Daniel Dubov that uh, you know, Daniel Dubov is a Russian uh, young uh, grandmaster who play pretty aggressively, uh, a lot of tactical um, hits in his games. Uh, so a very tough, very dangerous opponent. And Jordan Van Forest just managed to win. And he won again in his um, Sicilian defense as white. And again, he don't play the main most popular lines but uh, his his favorite system so let's see how that happened uh, warm welcome for both of the players jordan van forest uh, as white um, 2644 uh, points um, in his ranking uh, feeder ranking and uh, daniel dubov uh, 2683 uh, so that's 40 points um, difference but let's jump on the board and see what's happened in the game so we have e4 by uh, van forest uh, we have c5 sicilian defense knight f3 knight c6 and c3 knight f6 so very early moving knight f6 without any preparation and the main line is e5 knight d5 Bishop c4 attacking that knight, but knight can retreat to b6. Now we have bishop on b3 and c4. Bishop retreat to c2. And uh, d5 um, is the main continuation. We have e takes on d6, queen takes on d6, and castle on the king side by uh, Jordan. g6. We have knight a3, so again uh, Van Forest um, moved this knight on e3. Uh, this is pretty standard in, the, in, in his games and in this uh, Sicilian defense. Bishop g7, b3, c captures on b3 and a captures on b3. We have also a uh, castle by Dubov. d4 grabbing the center. Uh, bishop on g4 now, uh, so pinning that knight, h3 immediately, and uh, black are forced to exchange the, the bishop for the knight. We have queen on f3 and e5 in this position. Knight on b5, queen d7, queen has to of course move because it's attacked, rook d1, and now we have a6 trying to kick that knight, uh, but the main line is d5, so um, nothing fancy. Uh, if uh, in this position uh, black try to play some moves like mm, knight e7, let's say, then we would have knight c7, uh, queen takes on c7, and then d6. Queen would have to move, of course, d e7, rook f on e8 uh, also has to move, so all this is forced line. Bishop on e4, queen c7, and bishop on b7. So that would be uh, better for white, uh, as these pawns would be, you know, quite aggressive on the queen side. Uh, this is why uh, usually black play knight on b4 so um, exchanging these knights um, this this way uh, but uh, dubov goes with his knight on a3 and we have knight on c2 it's also possible to play f5 and if i decide to take the knight on b4 uh, then we would have e4 so discover attack on the rook on a1 but also attacking the queen on f3 so queen would have to move to e3 but attacking the uh, black knight on b6 uh, so knight would have to probably go on d5 take this um, take this pawn and uh, attack the queen 
and queen c5 double attack on the knight on d5 and bishop would anyway takes on a1 uh, rook takes on d5 a queen f7 and this position uh, is maybe slightly better for um, for white but there are not so many attacking chances uh, at least okay uh, black has two rooks for the two minor pieces but white also has uh, uh, double pawns on the b file so on the queen side black would be slightly better and also this uh, chain pawn chain is um, uh, pretty solid uh, so uh, i think black would have some chances uh in this um in this game uh there, there are games played uh, with f5 uh, system but um, in this position dubov decided to exchange this knight on the c2 so he took the bishop on c2 uh, we have knight takes on c2 rook from a to c8 we have c4 so now it's a uh, very beautiful uh, pawn chain and um, f5 by Dubov so that's pretty natural and in this position we have bishop on a3 and this bishop slicing the the chessboard uh, you know on this diagonal it's attacking the rook uh, on f8 but also uh, you know giving the way helping these pawns uh, to attack actually these pawns can attack uh, and it's helping them to you know uh, on these squares to, uh, to to make this decisive attack so very beautiful uh, situation for uh, white we have a rook of on f7 so definitely don't want to exchange the rook for the bishop rook a to c1 rook to e8 uh, and we have c5 so jordan van forest again uh, because in the first game he also attacked very actively uh, with his uh, pawns uh, on the queen side uh, play c5 we have e4 so attacking the queen queen moves to e2 we have knight on c8 so uh definitely dubov don't want to lose this knight queen c4 still very active move and it support the pawns of course attacking the pawns and uh, but also put this queen on the diagonal with um, the king we have knight on a7 so supporting some defensive uh, stance on the uh, on the front of the white pawns we have a knight on d4 and this knight looks uh, pretty dangerous here we have f4 and knight e6 and can you imagine better outpost for the knight this is this is so beautiful outpost we have a knight on b5 attacking the bishop on a3 so uh, bishop moved to b4 and now we have e3 so uh, Dubov, as I said, a uh, very active player, attacking player, and he tried to create some chances, uh, some mating chances uh, in this situation. And here we have knight on g5 attacking the, uh, attacking the rook. And in this position, actually, Jordan van Forest gave Dubov a uh, chances to make a quite nice attack, maybe, maybe very dangerous attack if Dubov find the move queen on f5 and uh, this rook is taken then we would have rook on e4 attacking the queen and after queen moving for example to d3 king takes on f f7 uh, bishop is under attack so bishop would have to move for example to e1 bishop d4 uh, rook c2 trying to uh, make you know some defense and f3 and that would give you know pretty dangerous situation uh, black would have like a lot of opportunities to to deliver some attack look at this it's f2 is is pushed so hard but also uh, g2 can be attacked um, a lot of uh, things can happen queen can can deliver on h3 after after uh, removing the uh, 
defender on G2. That would be pretty, pretty um, interesting uh, game. Uh, however, Dubov didn't find that move. He played uh, a little bit um, worse, uh, similar sequence, but um, not so uh, not so dangerous. E takes on F2 with a check. We have King takes on F2 and now Dubov go uh, Queen on F5. So a uh, similar idea. The sequence is different. Um, without this pawn on e3 everything looks like uh, not so not so dangerous but it's still you know remember this is daniel dubov uh, so still very dangerous we have knight takes on f7 rook on e4 so the very similar idea and uh, here white should just play uh, just easy move like queen goes on c2 and white would have uh, easier time to uh, win that game. Um, yes, now black has to decide they want to take the uh, knight on f7 or maybe, you know, rook on b4. They can take only one and th these pawns um, are going to be very dangerous here. So, um, yeah, that would be uh, the easiest idea for uh, Jordan van Forest. Uh, but he play very active c6 uh, and in this position actually uh, Daniel Dubov should take the queen on c4 and after rook on c4 b takes on c6 d takes on c6 and king takes on f f7 uh, white would maybe deliver uh, the check but after king on f6 and c7 uh, queen takes it on um, d7 uh, and exchanging the the queens we would have situation um, like this uh, better for white definitely uh, better for white uh, but still black would have probably some chances to to defend that that game uh, but in this position, uh, Daniel Dubov just picked the knight on um, f7 pretty early. And this is actually the blunder. And um, c takes on b7 is the move which Jordan van Forest, of course, found. But the game is still not ended. There's still a lot of things can happen as all the lines are very sharp and, and really, really uh, difficult to calculate. And uh, believe me or not, but in this position, Daniel Dubov has only eight minutes on the clock. So this is why he can't calculate everything um, so precisely. Uh, from Jordan Van Forest, it's um, 22 two minutes um, still left on the clock and a couple of moves uh, still to, to do before the time control. Uh, so we have rook on c4 right now uh, and here Jordan van Forest play uh, the pawn takes on c4 and it looks very very natural move uh, because now all, you see all these pawns uh, if the pawns can be you know they are already consolidated they just can move and be very dangerous especially with these two rooks supporting this this pawn so um, definitely very uh, move it's very suit for the human player um, however here uh, the engine shows that rook on c4 would be much uh, much better for white and after uh, queen on e5 because this um, uh, b8 uh, square has to be defended uh, we would have just rook on e1 which is not easy to find uh, because it looks like uh, black uh, can take the pawn on d5 but actually if black takes uh, on d5 there is uh, there is force checkmate so uh, rook on f4 with check bishop on f6 uh, defending but now we would have rook on e7 check and then king g8 and um, now we can, you know, uh, make a queen and uh, and yeah, just checkmate on d8. So uh, it's not easy to to see that. So black would have to probably go uh, queen on b2, uh, king f1, 
bishop on e5, so still have to keep an eye on b8 square, definitely. Rook c8, so now uh, preparing to, uh, you know, promote to the queen. Uh, maybe f3 with some mating ideas, so still have to be very careful here. Um, but after rook on f8, check, the f8 is, um, you know, defended. Uh, king on g7, white actually can pick up the, the pawn on f3. Uh, we would have something like h3, maybe d6. Uh, d6 is very powerful move because now um, uh, it can't be taken. Actually, it can be taken, but then uh, white gonna promote. So if black would like to you know, complicate the situation, maybe knight on d4 with some attacking ideas, but there is uh, actually totally nothing, so white would just promote knight f3, g f3, and uh, not enough material to actually win that game. It's impossible to checkmate by black with just uh, queen and the bishop. Uh, maybe would have some ideas on checkmating, but it's uh, everything too slow, uh, because if the bishop is moved, then white can just deliver checkmate first. So definitely not the option for Dubov here. Um, Jordan would just win much easier, much faster. Um, but but of course it's not easy to find the the move like this. Uh, it's it's easier for human just to fix the structure of pawns. And there is the, still the same issue with promoting uh, on b8 all the time. So have to keep an eye. And um, in this position, Dubov should go for a bishop on e5 and try to defend. And uh, d6 would happen probably. Uh, black can exchange everything, so uh, knight would take on d6. Bishop would take on d6, but that's possible. Yeah, of course it's not possible because uh, bishop takes on d6 and this bishop can't be taken because this would be black, which, you know, wins the game uh, because pick up the rook, controlling b8 and that would be, you know, winning for, for black. So, haha, <laughs> that's not the way to go here. So rather knight takes on d6 and rook has to take on um, d6. Um, so definitely better idea. And now bishop take on d6, bishop takes on d6. Uh, and in this position, queen on e6 attacking the bishop, but also attacking e3. So there is some threat with double attack. Uh, but white would have probably pick up the the chance to uh, create the queen and once uh, everything is exchanged king f1 uh, queen takes on c1 with check king e2 uh, queen c4 with check king d2 and here black would have some maybe even drawing chances uh, even probably could try to um, exchange the queens and once this is done uh, white would have to go for this pawn first and it's quite a long journey uh, and come to defend and as you see uh, the white bishop uh, can really support the pawns so uh, black would have time to to get actually and try to pick up these pawns uh, would be very interesting game and um, this pawn would have to have support but all this support would be on the dark squares uh, so it's not really clear how that would happen, but I believe that black would have the chances. And remember, if black managed to take these pawns, um, then it's a draw. And uh, and yeah, that would be, I think, the best chance for um, Dubov. That's his last chance, I think, uh, to draw that game. However, in this position, actually Dubov uh, play queen on e5. So e5, uh, queen on e5 uh, controls the b8 square. The, I think this is the most important square whole game. Uh, we have c takes on b5 by, by white. Queen b2, check. King f1. Bishop on e5. So uh, still protecting the, this b8 d6 and uh, now the b8 uh, square can't be controlled so we have f3 
trying to creating some some threads, um, checkmating ideas. Uh, so uh, white has to be careful, uh, but now don't have resources to you know move the rook around and kill that that pawn. So g takes on f3, and Dubov play queen on b3, and this is very precise move. White has to be really extremely careful. King e2 defend the f3 pawn and queen e6 and actually Dubov set up the trap here if uh, white would uh, take the uh, queen right now then we would have bishop takes on d6 check king f2 bishop takes on b8 and actually the chances are pretty equal we have uh, two rooks against against the queen, but uh, but it's very close to draw. Of course, Jordan van Forest uh, didn't fall for that trap. Uh, in this position, he managed to play rook on c7 check, and now we have a king on f6, and now there is the time to actually uh, make a queen, and we have bishop on f4 so this is actually another trap by, by Dubov if white play king f2 it looks pretty natural yeah but watch what's gonna happen if if you play a uh, king on f2 we would have queen e3 check king f1 queen f3 check king e1 King e3 check and then we would have just a threefold repetition and if white uh, try to you know escape from that and play uh, king on g1 that would be black which uh, which win that game uh, bishop e3 check king h2 queen e2 check king h1 queen d1 check king g2 Queen e2 check king g3, queen f2 check king g4, and h5 would end the game. So Daniel Dubov still until the end of the game uh, set up the traps, uh, you know, and try to uh, draw or even win. So it's really, really impressive that uh, the player can set a lot of traps at the end. Uh, I'm really impressed uh, of this fight until the end. Uh, Van Forest play king on d3. Now we have a queen on d5. It looks, it doesn't look natural, but this is the only way to win. Queen d5 check, king c2, queen a2 check, king c3 bishop e5 check king d3 queen b3 check and now we have uh, king on e4 and in this position um, daniel dubov just resigned and he resigned because um, black can't deliver more useful uh, checks it would happen okay it would take this um this bishop with check but after king e3 uh, bishop f4 check king f2 queen b2 after king f1 um, there is nothing that uh, can save the black from losing the game and uh, once uh, the check can't be delivered uh, white would just start to attack and checkmate uh, black. This is why Daniel Dubov um, resigned the game. So pretty impressive stuff. Uh, very, very good start of the tournament. After three rounds, Jordan Van Forest has two points. Uh, he lost the second so second game. So I thought the first game was, you know, just um, some lucky accident because... Uh, his opponent from China just uh, tried to push too hard. But here with Dubov, he managed to play a very beautiful game. 
so uh, yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm pretty impressive and I'm happy that I can comment on that game. So uh, if you enjoyed this like me, feel free to, you know, like, like this video. Uh, I think it's worth to like. If you don't like, of course, uh, cli click and like, uh, but definitely uh, leave the comment because I think it's worth to leave the comment uh, under the game like this. Um, and yeah, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching and see you in the next one.